is Jed Masterson, and I'm a caravan boss for the Happy Trails Caravan Company. If you're hearing this, I have a job offer for you. Happy Trails is organizing an expedition north into Utah, off the Long 15, and we need people. We're looking for caravan guards, prospectors, couriers. If you're used to humping it across the waste, straight toward trouble, we want you. If you got a pit boy, we definitely want you. On the other hand, if you're a greenhorn or a city slicker spinning tales about your skills, you can kindly go hang. If we like your gumption, we'll pay you square and treat you fair. Find me, Jed Masterson, at the Northern Passage if you're interested. Luck to you. I you know, that sounds like the perfect thing for a vacation, you know, going off to Utah. That seems like a nice, nice, quiet little way. Plus, I'm a courier. I've been hoofing it around the wasteland. And, you know, trouble seems to always find me. Especially when I'm trying not to get it. You know what? This sounds like a nice little thing to do. Anyways, hey everybody, TBG Hunter here, and welcome back to more Fallout New Vegas. Last time we finished up Dead Money... We uh, pretty much locked uh, Elijah in the Sierra Madre. We helped make everyone's who, who well, besides Elijah's lives, a little bit better. Uh, we also got a hollow message for Chris, uh, not for Christine, for Veronica, that last time I had no idea how to give it to her, and after doing a little bit of research, I finally figured it out. So before we leave for our little expedition, let's talk to her. What's up? I've got something I need to ask you. Uh, uh, that's not the things I want to ask you. Uh, tell me about yourself. And basically, we need to talk about Elijah. Yeah. Where is he now? I don't know. Last time anyone saw him was in the battle at Helios 1. I wasn't there. He gave orders to hold the plant until he could be reactivated. But he ran out of time. The NCR overran it. Everyone thought he was dead. But I got a note from him at a comm station. That's how he liked to talk, even to me. He wasn't good at face-to-face. -face. So, what was on the note? It was... strange. Even for Father Elijah. He's always been unstable, but this was... something else. I don't want to say delusional, but... I don't know what else to call it. The only thing familiar about it was the signature. He said the Brotherhood was doomed, but that he'd return, save us. But the way he said it, I don't know. Said he'd return with one of the greatest treasures of the old world. Make the Mojave like it was meant to be. Wipe the slate clean. Hmm. Veronica, I What's got that? a special message for you. Uh, I found Elijah. You did? Where? Oh my god, I mean, uh, I, I thought... I don't even know what I thought might have happened to him. But you don't have a this is good news expression on your face. Um I had to trap him in a pre-war prison. Trapped him? Where? It doesn't matter. He died when we all retreated to Hidden Valley. I didn't expect to see him again. No one did. Did he say anything when you met him? Anything... Anything at all? Uh, there's something I wanted to pass along. Where did you get this? Guess I was right about the bad news, huh? Same look Elder McNamara always gave me when I was up for promotion. Alright, uh... It's a message. The news is up to you. Alright. I'll watch it. That was... That was hard to watch. Did it make any sense? The parts I understood? Didn't matter. Past all the garbage, all it amounted to was goodbye. Sorry. Feel a little out of it. Head spinning a bit. Oh. Oh! I think he left me a gift. Maybe I can use it better than he did. And with that, Veronica has received Elijah's last words, Perk. She has learned the secret... A secret melee weapon technique that increases her attack speed by 150% and gives her a 25% chance to knock down enemies. Now, this is actually 
uh, a perk nice. that can be one of two perks that you can give her. Uh, just like uh, most things, like Raul and all that stuff, it dictates how you give give her the message. Like I think is, if we say he's dead or something, or actually I think if we do kill him, ugh, kill him in the mo in the the vault, uh, then basically uh, it gives her a different perk, which I'll go over in a later part. But for now. It's time for us to head on out to the Northern Passage, so we can finally get that nice little vacation to Utah. But you know what? For courier service, I honestly don't look the part. I need something that looks a bit more yeah, courier-ish. Something that says I'm now part of a caravan. There we go. Much better, you know. When one go pair of goggles isn't enough, and two is too few, you gotta go with the triple goggles. It it's only fair to do so. Alright, back to the casino. It's time for us to head off and finally get that well-deserved vacation. Uh, I just got back here, took like a day or two to just sleep off that whole nonsense with with the Sierra Madre, and now I'm back on to try and find myself a new vacation. This is going to be my goal in life before this war is over. My goal of finding a, a vacation so I can just rest and relax before the shit hits the fan, and I just want to be happy for once. And we finally arrived. Oh, that's a pretty sight. Just a grave right outside my destination. Lovely. Oh, this seems like a, this looks like a caravan service if ever there was one, except for this guy who obviously stands out. Howdy, friend. Heard my little broadcast, did you? Yeah, you look the type. Wait a minute, I recognize you. Yeah, you're Alice McLafferty's rising star, ain't you? You sure you want to be here? McLafferty's non-competes are pretty rigid. Mm, tell me a bit more about the job. The job is simple. Help us get this caravan into Zion and find new king. The pay is 25 caps per day. Half up front, half on the turf. You'll get a bonus if we make it into Zion. Plus another bonus if we reach new king. Oh, uh, one more thing. Don't mention the name Joshua Graham to anyone. Anyone. Uh, who's Joshua Graham and why shouldn't I talk about him? Just don't. It makes the new Canaanites powerful uncomfortable. And it scares the britches off the tribes. Don't talk about the burn man either while you're at it. Trust me on this one. It's for your own good. Tell me about the Happy Trails Caravan Company. We're a smaller company out of Sacktown, up in the northern part of the MCR. We run some business through New Reno. They're on a little loop. Had a nice run to Salt Lake City, too, but uh, then we lost contact with New Canaan, and that went all to hell. Mm, sounds like Happy Trails is in, in the best financial shape. You ain't wrong. Losing the Salt Lake City run really stung us. If we can't reestablish contact with this run, We'll be in real trouble. Why can't you get to Salt Lake City? Without New Canaan's mission in Zion, the only ways to Salt Lake City are down the old I-80, or up through Ogden. The highway is too risky. NCR's rangers are so busy here in the Mojave, they don't have the manpower to keep the raiders off. Ogden's just too far. We'd lose more in travel expenses than we'd ever earn. All right, well, what can you tell me about New Canaan? Don't know much about the place, but I can tell you about the people. The New Canaanites were some kind of religious group from before the war. They controlled the old city of Ogden, a ways north of Zion, and they got themselves a nice defensible mission in the canyon itself, or they did. They trade a fair bit with the tribes in Zion. Well, the ones that don't try to kill them anyways. Do you know anything about the religion? I ain't a praying man myself. They paid for their goods and dealt square with us. That's all I ever cared about. 
But don't think that just because they're religious, that they're pacifists. They take care of their own, and they're damn fine marksmen, too. You don't know what happened to their mission? Nope. Hence this caravan. If we don't make contact with the new Canaanites, Happy Trails might as well just shrivel up and die. Alright, now a couple other questions sure. before we head out. I understand this caravan is headed to Zion. What can you tell me about the area? Well, I ain't never been inside myself. Did some training with the new Canaanites from their mission there. But that was all on the outskirts. All the old ways in and out were destroyed after the war. But we got ourselves a location of a pass the new Canaanites use. That's our way in. That's why I wanted someone with a pit boy on the caravan. The map will be helpful for checking the topography, keeping us on the trail. I don't know. Have you seen a local map on a pit boy? It's pretty much useless. I haven't been through Utah recently. What's the situation like? Well, it ain't good. I'll tell you that. It's not like the Mojave or the NCR. Hell. Even Arizona under Caesar is safe. You got raiders all over the damn place. Tribes of degenerates that'll eat you as soon as look at you. Regional warlords, the worst. Not too many decent places to stop and trade. New Canaan's one of the only ones left I know about. Hmm. What about the raiders? They're about what you'd expect. Crazy. Jacked up on cans, violent as hell, and not too bright. The worst of the 80s. But we won't be passing through their turf on this run. And degenerate tribes? That's right. The folks that lived in Zion before the war, they didn't just get a little savage. They're downright feral. Most of them don't even speak English anymore. You've got to get yourself a new Canaanite translator to talk to. The ones you really got to watch out for are the White Lands from the Great Salt Lake. They'll attack just about anyone that ain't one of theirs. And warlords, how dangerous are they? Dangerous enough we won't be going near them if we can help it. I got no desire for my head to decorate some little gas station for its walls, thanks. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, now nah, I do not want to play a game of caravan. Let me talk about the crew before we head on out. Looking to join this caravan, huh? Looks to me like you can handle yourself. Well, it's nice to see I'm actually getting some recognition for my skill. Earning my keep, Jed hired me on as a caravan guard for this expedition of his. The work suits me. I've tried staying put in one place, but it never works out. Grew up in New Reno, and I couldn't put that snake pit behind me fast enough. Then I wound up wasting the prime of my life playing sheriff in Caliente. Little town north on the 93. Talk about a pain in the ass. You ask me, best to keep moving. At least the scenery changes. All right, well, what's it like growing up in New Reno? Imagine New Vegas if there was no Mr. House type fella keeping the peace. Then give everybody a gun and a jet addiction. Town's run by a bunch of crime families. No law to speak of. Make trouble and you wind up buried in Golgotha outside town. The scuzz factor's off the charts. Non-stop whoring and drugs. Couldn't walk down the street without getting asked to star in a porn movie. So I got my ass out of there while I still owned it. Guess I figured the answer to every problem was rule of law. Naive, huh? All right, well, what about Caliente? Place lived up to its name, that's for sure. When you got fresh water and a trickle of geothermic power, always be some gang of assholes wants to kill you for it. Spent more years and took more bullets than I care to admit protecting that hellhole from dangers within and without. If it wasn't the 80s or the White Legs raiding, it was someone from town drunk off his ass trying to win an argument with a shotgun. Got tired of shooting the folks I was supposed to protect. So, now I do this. Were the 80s a gang or a tribe? What's the difference? Raiders is raiders. Bunch of them swept into town and dragged off two working girls. Deputies and me gave pursuit straight into 80s territory. By the time we caught up with the girls, there wasn't much left of them. So we turned for home. Made it back to Caliente without further losses, but we was watched the whole way. Never seen so few people cover so much land. Goddamn creepy. If the 80s had wanted to kill us, we would have been dead. 
Guess they figured we weren't worth the trouble. And what about the White Legs? Used to be they raided northeast of Caliente time to time. But then the Desert Rangers fell apart ten years ago, absorbed into the NCR. Soon enough, the White Legs were swarming all over that stretch of I-15. Folks learned not to head north if they wanted to keep their scalps. Eventually, the White Legs destroyed the bridges across the Virgin River over in Arizona. End of discussion. All right. Catch then. you another time, then. Will do. And you two are just generic guards. What about you? You look like an asshole. You looking for trouble, bud? I got plenty to spare. So watch your ass around me. Seriously, you looking at me? And you, you're trying to start shit already? Unwarranted hostility and general aggression. How long have you been a psycho addict? Hey, 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 fuck you! I didn't say nothing about using psycho! Oh, I'm going to hate you. You do anything around here besides talk too much? You want to know what I do, bud? Anything I fucking want. I'm one of a kind. I've been places, see? And done things. Lots of them. And when it's time to kill shit up, hell yeah, I'm a fucking storm of death. Something or someone make the mistake of crossing Ricky? I'll fucking dead-eye him, her, or it. In fact, yeah, in fact, that's my nickname. Dead-Eye Ricky. That's my name. Are you related to some guy named Fantastic? Because I feel like you two are one and the same person. Dead-Eye, huh? How'd you get that nickname? Uh, how you think? I shoot things in the eye. That's how good I am. Yeah, I'm that good. Why, uh, once I got jumped by three death jaws. Except, actually, it was four of them. Imagine that! But I didn't panic. Because... Because I never panic. What I did was become a storm of death. Shot every one of them monsters pop in the eye. Death Jaws, huh? Did you mean to say Death Claws? No, no. You heard me right. Death Jaws. They're like Death Claws. But bigger teeth. Or there was the time one of them Steel Brotherhood assholes made the mistake of messing with me. Last mistake he ever made. So what, is that like the, the Gator Claws from Fallout 4, which I totally called? Uh, you're saying that you killed a Brotherhood Steel Paladin? What's it sound like I'm saying? If I was saying what you said I was saying, then yeah, I said it. I was walking along, minding my own, and up pops one of them Brotherhoods. He yells, hand over that laser rifle, asshole. So I hand it over, just to make him think I'm scared. But really, I'm not. I never am. Before he knows what hit him, I draw my 11 millimeter machine gun and bam, bam, right through the eye slit in his helmet. DOA. Hmm. What a load of crap. The eye slits of the T series power armor are bulletproof. Then I guess this dumb fucker's armor must have been D-Series or something. All I know is, he died up real dead when I killed him, okay? I can use words correct. Do you have any other special skills or abilities? Well, I grew up near Dayglow out west, so yeah, I grew a third nut that glows in the dark. It looks like you're traveling light. Carry some items for me and I'll make it worth your while. I travel light on purpose, okay? But if the price is right, I'll tell Jed I'm carrying less. So you can carry more. What's your offer? Hmm, I'll give you 50 caps. Just make sure Jed lets me carry extra gear. You got a deal. You're lucky he trusts me. I'm sure he can't trust you as far as he can throw you. I see you're wearing a pit boy in a vault suit. Nice job, Eagle Eye. Of course I got a pit boy and a vault suit. So what? Where'd you get the vault suit? Where the fuck you think? Vault 2-2. Two two. That's where I grew up. You're lying. I've been to Vault 22. No one's lived there in 150 years. Oh, you've been to Vault 2-2, two two, huh? I may have been exaggerating a little. Truth is, I got this suit and the pit boy off a dead prospector who came out from Zion. Guy was dead when I found him, okay? 
Had a ton of shit on him. That's how I know there's good loot in Zion, see? Uh, what do you use the Pip-Boy for? Sorry. The shit I do with it is so far over your head, I'd be wasting my time to put it in words you could understand. Basically, it makes me badass. More badass, I mean. It's totally mind-blowing shit. It ain't just a bracelet. Know what I mean? Jed says it's got maps and shit like that. So that's how I'm gonna guide this caravan where it needs to go. Not that I didn't know all that already. Did you notice I'm wearing a Pip-Boy too? Huh? Of course I noticed. First thing I noticed about you. Me? I'm so used to wearing mine, it's just normal. Don't think you're someone special just because you got one. Oh no, I think I'm special because I got a better one. Mine's all pimped out. Fit boy isn't working. The screen's locked up and the reboot button is missing. Bullshit! Ain't nothing wrong with my Fit Boy. I, I mean, Pip Boy! Look, this is a sweet gig for me. Don't go fucking it up. What are you after anyways? Oh, to make your life miserable. I've got your number, that's all. Just wanted to let you know. Fine. Just keep it to yourself, all right? Don't be such a fucking jerk about it. Yeah. Whatever. You know, it's gonna be a long trip, and we're probably gonna be out in the middle of nowhere at some point. And if something were to happen to you, well, I already got a pit boy, so it would be nothing to value lost, so... Watch your back. Cause I'm aiming for it. Alright, Jed, I'm ready to move out. Are you here to join me a while? Wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, I'm ready to go. Are you now? You know, we ain't coming back this way for a good long while now, right? And you know about the weight limit. I don't want no whining about old Mr. Masters. I left my one-of-a-kind plasma cannon back at base. Can we go back for it? You sure you're ready now? Yes, I'm sure. Wait, why the weight limit? You ain't never been to Zion, have you? We'll be passing through a whole mess of narrow slot canyons and high rough passes. A big pack will get you wedged in like a super mutant crawling through a storm drain. And too much weight will kill you in the thin air. All right, I'm ready to go. You sure? Yes, I'm sure. Well, all right then. Let's get moving. We got a long road ahead of us. 150 caps, nice. The paths we're following are slow going, so you might as well keep your ears open and listen to what old Jed has to say. A few decades back, folks in the NCR started to hear about a community in northern Utah called New Canaan. Didn't know much about them, except that they were religious folks, sent out missionaries to talk to the tribes. We've seen our share of cults, but the New Canaanites, they were honest traders. Good fighters, too. Raiders wouldn't tangle with them. But then, the Legion appeared in Arizona. I reckon you know all about them. Turns out Caesar's first war chief, the Malpace Legate, was a new Canaanite, Joshua Graham. Legend goes that Graham was the meanest, toughest son of a bitch in the whole damn Legion. The new Canaanites wouldn't talk about him. They were ashamed. Guess I can't blame him. Well, at Hoover Dam, the Malpace Legate finally met his match. Hanlon and Oliver kicked his new Canaanite butt right back over the river. Caesar had to make an example for the others, to show them that even at the highest level, failure wouldn't be tolerated. He had Graham covered in pitch, lit on fire, and thrown into the Grand Canyon. People say he didn't even scream on the way down. Not long after, some of the slaves and tribals started to talk. Said Graham wasn't dead. Shouldn't have been any surprise. All this talk bothered Caesar. So he forbade anyone from speaking his name. Wanted to erase Joshua Graham from history. He got his wish. Joshua Graham disappeared. And in his place, K-9. 
became legends of the burned man walking the wastes. Probably just a tribal ghost story. But New Canaan's been silent for a long time. Maybe it's a coincidence. Maybe the Malpace Legged is dead. Or maybe Joshua Graham did crawl out of that canyon and finally found his way back home. I swear, if we had to hear one more of Ricky's stories right, one more people. time. It's been a long couple of weeks, but here we are. Zion, I know your feet hurt. I know you're tired, but I need everyone's mind on the trail ahead. Ain't the trail ahead worries me, Jed. Those descents we made through that slot canyon back up there. Ain't no way we're getting back out the way we come. And then what? God damn it, Stella heard you the first time. And the 15th, too. The new Canaanites will know a way, and if they don't, we've got the maps on our friend's Pip-Boy over there. Enough lollygagging. Get moving, and keep an eye out for tribals. So, what happened to the two random guards that we had with us? Oh, wait, there they are. It's not a problem. Fuck off, I'm busy. Oh, man, your time is coming, buddy. That's a it's a very nice scenery. I'm actually happy. This seems to be like a nice little adventure. God damn it, ambush! Cover people! I had to open my mouth. Just had to open my mouth. Ugh. Jeez! Ah, man, they killed Ricky. I wanted to do it. Oh, God. Oh, there goes Dave Fenway. Suddenly, I'm getting Telltale flashbacks. Uh, right, well, we're, we're stuck behind enemy lines. Um... Just got ambushed. My entire, you know, team has just been killed. Violently. And Ricky's dead, so I can't do anything now. I missed my opportunity to take him out. I should have acted back in that one canyon. A millimeter submachine gun. Don't know what that is. A fire axe. Tomahawks. Sure, why not? Hey, uh, Jed? You alright, buddy? He died very angrily. Oh, shit. It's, this is gonna be dead money all over again. At least with less gas. Ah, oh, man, they popped his head like a cherry tomato. I wanted to do that. Alright, well, I took a leg, so I guess that'll make up for it. Stella! No! You will be avenged! And generic guard number two! You also will be avenged! Let's take the grenade launcher that they had. I'm going into this alone. I want to go in with heavy firepower. Actually, how much is that uh, honey rifle worth? The 664? Yeah, it should be. Fetch a good price if I can get to New Canaan. Dude, I have an anti material rifle. Jeez! And a rebar club. Although it's not really worth that much. Oh god. That was a react that was a reaction shot if ever there was one. I blew them up so hard that only their legs are here. And and then uh, Yep, just their legs. 
45 auto submachine gun. And a brush gun. Nice. Big fungus. Uh, Anti-venom. Anti-venom is always nice to have. And a 45 submachine gun. Let me take a look at that thing. Why? It's a Tommy gun! That's, that is exactly what it is. It is a Tommy gun. Ow, 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 ow. Get the cover. Um. What? I think you got him, buddy. Hoy, white legs don't leave survivors often. You're some kind of lucky, let me tell you. You came from outside, didn't you? From the civilized lands. Wow. Joshua will want to hear about this. Uh. Joshua? Who's... Who is this Joshua? Joshua Graham. He leads our tribe. Thanks to him, the dead horses are strong and safe from our enemies. He'll want to talk to anyone coming up from Southways. Guess that means just you now. Come, I can take you to him. All right, let's go. Good sists. We head east then. Joshua is at our tribe's camp in the Eastern Virgin. Although well, Chuck has given you the well stacked Karen's perk, or Karen's perk, or whatever. While well, Fellows Chuck is in your party, reaching any summit in Zion Valley, such as Ranger Stations, will reveal all nearby map markers and inspire a heightened state of an awareness. Gives you three perception for three minutes. Oddly specific. So, buddy, who exactly are you? What can I tell you? Uh, tell me a little bit about the area. Any interesting wildlife? Mostly it's the mountain bighorners. Whole herd of them up on the cliffs there. Usually they're not too aggressive, but lately, whew. My guess is one of the calves got lost somewhere along the way. Bighorners are communal. One missing calf, and the whole herd gets ornery. If that calf doesn't turn up soon... They might very well come down into the valley and attack the camp. Maybe I can help with that. Yeah? Hey, thanks. Most of the hunters don't listen when I tell them the problem. Just one thing. Try not to kill any bighorners if you can, yeah? You'll drive the herd off and we'll have to range farther on our hunts. What do you suggest I do instead? Hmm. You might try luring the baby out with some banana yucca. These big horners go crazy for the stuff. All right, I'll look into it. That's great. I'll help any way I can. What can I tell you? Um, so who were those tribals who had just attacked me? White legs. Nasty bunch. They've been raiding deeper into Zion ever since New Canaan was wiped out. Wait, what? New Canaan's been wiped out? How? That's what Joshua said. White legs came down from Great Salt Lake in force. Fell on New Canaan before they could mount a defense. Joshua found some of the survivors led by a man named Daniel. Most of them have fled the valley. But Daniel stayed on with the Sorrows tribe. He and Joshua have been arguing over whether to stand and fight the White Legs. Or take the Sorrows and the dead horses out of the valley. Where did they come from? That's the weird part. Normally, the White Legs keep to the Great Salt Lake. I don't know what brought them down this far south. All right, well, I want to know a bit more about you. What can I tell Why are you called Follows Chalk? Our advanced scouts leave chalk signs to mark places rich with game. I'm not a full scout yet, so I follow the marks and guide the hunters. Uh, what are those tattoos? Dead horses mark ourselves to commemorate our hunts. When a hunter takes a great beast, or when a youth goes on his first hunt, he gets a tattoo. All right, well, what about your tribe? We came up in the land of the dead horse. Though, why the back when folks called it that, I got no hint. We raided. We fought. We lost. Our enemies drove us back into Zion 
and we would have died if it hadn't been for Joshua. Joshua and his Kaisar. Wait, what about Caesar? When Joshua first came to us, he was servant to a man he called Kaisar. He led his master's armies, and we were ready to follow him into war. Then he lost his master's army to a tribe called Ensiar, the Sunset People. When he returned, he was as you saw him, burned, broken, but changed. He led us away from Kaisar, led us to our own destiny in Zion. What did Joshua do for you? If it wasn't for Joshua, the dead horses would still be the whipping boys of the Zion Valley. He taught us how to hold our territory, to protect ourselves. He guided us away from Kaisar and showed us how Kaisar would have destroyed us. What do you know about the new Canaanites? Little bit. I met some of their missionaries a few times, but I've never been to their city. Joshua could tell you more. Or Daniel, I imagine. All right. Uh, I don't have any more questions for you right now. Let's let's head on out. Um, might as well grab the banana yucca that we saw over here when I was crossing the bridge. Yoink! And let's make our way over to that camp and meet this Joshua guy that we've been told stories about. How far are we from the camp exactly? Uh, we got a little bit of a hike. Hold up. See that log over there? Take a closer look. There might be some good stuff tucked in there. Anti-venom and rat meat? Hmm. I'll take the venom. Well, at least it's now nice and quiet, and I just listen to the ambiance of we the valley. This path for a while. Nice view of the river. Yeah, yeah it actually is a, quite a nice view. Actually, it's a really nice view. Please. What? That was some kind of lucky. Guess that one was all full of gecko, eh? <laughs> Don't get used to it, though. Yaogwai are plenty mean as a rule. Good to know. Knowing my luck, I'm gonna get eaten by one at least once on this adventure. You can take the path north here if you want. Or head east over the ridge. There's a nice view from the top of that cliff, if you want to look. You know, right where the bear went. Uh, is that it over there? Yeah, that's it. It's just chilling. Just relaxing. Full of gecko. But at least it's nice and peaceful out here. Nearly there. Actually, it's really peaceful. Kind of weirdly peaceful after, you know, the ambush that happened. The hell is that? That's oh, just some geckos. You see the dead sentries? Shamans say our enemy's souls are trapped in them. But Joshua says it shows we're serious about fighting white legs. You don't say. At least this, it gives us an idea that we're on the right path. Zion Valley Welcome Booth. See those handprints? Dead horses and sorrows mark them on taboo places. Places from back when. Good thing for you, I don't buy into that stuff. 
Oh, a, a park ranger hat. How lovely. Gotcha! Maybe you should have probably bought that into it. Oh, God, I think you just pissed off the bear. Oh, you definitely pissed off the bear. Now, what have we learned, Follows? Don't piss off the bear. Because it's a bear. Only worst thing about a bear is a radioactive bear. Large burnt book. Uh, I thought that was like a, a map or something. Aw, oh, man. Someone drank all the Sunset Sarsaparilla. Alright. Uh, go left seems to be the right way to go. So, let's do that. Down this path to the north. Hope you don't mind getting wet. Aw, oh, man. That one chick who was, like, the facing rocks in the national parks has been through here, hasn't she? These paintings show the dead horses' victories against other tribes. Lots more of them since Joshua came to us. Eastern version. Well, we know we're in the right place now. Nearly there now. Watch out for traps in the water. Got to keep the white legs out somehow. Ah, uh, yes. What will keep the white legs fully out of your camp? A single bear trap in the water. I've had enough of you things from dead money, thank you very much. At least you're easier to see, and this is actually probably the most crystal clear water I've seen in this adventure. Fish! Actual fish! I shouldn't be arriving at the camp any minute now. Hello. Here we are. Joshua's just ahead there, in the angel cave. Well, all right then. Ooh, some fried get go. Eh, the dead horses camp. What the hell. Yeah, you go do those push-ups, guy. All right, let's head on inside. Um, what? Two bears high-fiving. Hmm. Someone could probably make an ink blot out of that thing. Hoi. Auslander Zuka Joshua Graham. The, am I looking for Joshua? Yes, I am. Can you tell me where he you is? You know our tongue. Smart, Auslander. Joshua in high place, I hear. You show respect, Utman. Joshua is greatest warrior. You show him no respect. He show you thunder and fire. I'll be sure to be on my best behavior then. You wise for Auslander. Yeah, that. Boot. Boot. Yes, I do wear boots. We should have given you a better welcome on your first visit to Zion. But from what I hear, the White Legs beat us to it. White Legs seem to be the only visitors we have these days. And I wouldn't have expected anyone from the Mojave to come looking for us. And you're a courier, no less. Not the one I was expecting. But I suppose he wouldn't have come with a caravan. I don't know if you were close to the other members of your group. But you have my sympathy. 
I pray for the safety of all good people who come to Zion, even Gentiles. But we can't expect God to do all the work. Eh, don't worry about it. That rich guy that was in my group was a dick. I was gonna shoot him myself when I got the chance, but they beat me to it. How'd you know what happened to me? The dead horses are capable scouts. Nothing passes into or out of Zion without my hearing of it. I came here with the Happy Trails Caravan Company to make contact with the new Canaanites. Happy Trails. I remember. They were good friends. I have bad news for your employers. New Canaan was destroyed, its citizens scattered. All because of the White Legs. And Caesar, of course. The White Legs want to join the Legion. Caesar's rite of passage is the destruction of the new Canaanites, almost assuredly because of me. The good news is that we can help you find your way back. Daniel, one of the other new Canaanites, has made many maps of the region. The bad news is that we can't help you right now, not with everything that's going on. Well, I'm not going to leave without offering to help. Anything I can do? You're a good neighbor to us. We all go through periods of darkness. In such times, we can turn to the Lord, but it's good to have friends. Daniel and I need pre-war tools to help us navigate beyond Zion. Should we need to evacuate, these instruments will be vital to us. Normally, we would have some of the dead horses of Soros look for them, but many pre-war buildings in the valley are taboo. They won't go inside. I'll see what I can do. Wait, taboo? They put special marks around the cave entrances to keep people out. It doesn't work on the white legs, of course. But the dead horses are spooked. All right, well, I'll see what I can do. Thank you. Follows Chalk can help you find your way around the valley. He's inexperienced, but he knows enough of our language to ignore the taboos about pre-war buildings. All right, then. Well, we arrived at Zion. And we leveled up! Nice! So, what are we gonna pour stuff into? Because, I, honestly, I thought that we reached max level at 40 and not 50. It's been quite a while, so I don't know what to put stuff into now. Alright, so I decided to up energy weapons by 5, just, I don't know, it seemed like the right thing to do. Uh, melee weapons I up to 65, uh, survival I just dumped the last couple of points into it just so I could have that an even number because I'm just OCD like that. And unarmed I up to 70, so now I just need to get a, like, 5 into it if I want to get that special weapon. But that's not going to be for quite a while. Wait, why is Joshua already taking some damage? I guess that's from the burn stuff? Welcome back. What can I do for you? What did you say about a courier? Who were you expecting? Caesar would never admit this openly. But he knows that I'm alive. I've killed enough of his frumentari and assassins that have come looking. Hey, so have I. Not one of them travels the Mojave as a courier. Most of Caesar's agents meet a fitting end in NCR territory. But maybe this one survived. Well, Caesar is dead. I saw to it personally. I thought you should know. I have to admit, it's hard to believe. That even after all he did to me, all he tried to do to find and erase me from this world, he went first. No doubt this will be good for the Mojave. I can only hope Arizona and the tribes don't suffer as the Legion falls apart around them. They won't. I'll make sure the Legion has very little to, little to go home with. Hmm. Good. You're doing God's work, whether you believe it or not. Pray? God? What are you talking about? I am a new Canaanite. We believe we are the heirs of a spiritual tradition given to our ancestors thousands of years ago. We have made and kept covenants with our Lord God to honor his laws. In exchange, we are promised eternal salvation after this life. A day will come when our Lord returns to judge us all. Until then, we must honor his laws and start others along the path of salvation if we can. That's why we trade with others and work the tribes. We have more than food and medicine to offer. 
Good news is our most valuable commodity. It's gonna be one of those types of stories, isn't it? Sounds like a good deal. In a world filled with misery and uncertainty, it is a great comfort to know that, in the end, there is light in the darkness. Every day we move closer to our judgment. We must do our best to walk in the footsteps of our Lord and teach others how to do the same. For many of us, the road is a difficult one, but the path is always there for us to follow, no matter how many times do you ever fall? Every day. Some days are harder than others. Nice guns you got there. In the Great Basin and Colorado Plateau, all tribes are known for a specific weapon. White legs are known for their big submachine guns, storm drums. They broke into an armory near Spanish Fork and have been using them for years. Of course, the dead horses have their wooden war clubs. And even the Sorrows have their Yao Guai gauntlets. This type of 45 automatic pistol was designed by one of my tribe almost 400 years ago. Learning its use is a new Canaanite rite of passage. Do you run the show around here? I wouldn't say that. I am the acting war chief for the Dead Horses. They look up to me for such matters, but I only have the authority they give me. Daniel is the spiritual leader main link of the new Canaanites to the Sorrows. He's up in the narrow right now. What's going on with all these tribes? A great deal. There are three, in fact four, tribes here in Zion. You've already met the White Legs on the way in. In this camp, you'll find dead horses. In the Narrows, the Sorrows. And finally, there's Daniel and myself. We're new Canaanites. Why do the White Legs attack my caravan? They attack everyone who isn't a White Leg, especially caravans. They don't know how to survive on their own, so they have to raid. But as for why they are here, they are trying to wipe us out. All of us. They want to join Caesar's Legion, and they can only prove their worth by destroying the new Canaanites and everyone we shelter. Do they speak our language? Most don't. It's been hundreds of years since the war. They've developed their own languages. Take the dead horses. We think they were originally refugees from a place called Rez, east of the Grand Canyon. They speak a combination of Rez and the language spoken by travelers who were visiting Rez when the bombs fell. Over time, the two languages blended. I was a translator years ago, but it's hard to keep up with all of the tribal variants. Does the valley belong to the dead horses? The valley belongs to God, but no. The dead horses live at Dead Horse Point, up the Colorado River. They came here because I asked them to. Before I return to the fold, I visited them years earlier. I look much different then, but I left an impression on them. I taught them how to hunt more efficiently, how to maintain their weapons and pre-war equipment. When I returned, they showed their appreciation. Why haven't I seen any sorrows in the valley? The sorrows have many skilled hunters among them, but no warriors. They have not had to deal with war or raiders for decades. Even though they can hunt a full-grown Yaowai, they don't know how to deal with the white legs. That's why we're here. Are the Canaanites really a tribe? We wear more clothing than them and understand more about technology. But we're still a tribe, a linked family of families. The Boneyard, Phoenix, New Vegas, they're just places, metal and stone. New Canaan dies, but the tribe lives on. When the walls come tumbling down and you lose everything you have, you always have family. And your family always has tribe. Hmm, huh, insightful. We do. Though the White Legs destroyed New Canaan, they didn't destroy all of our supply caches. All forms of currency are recognized here. Caps, NCR dollars, even Legion coin. Take a look. 
All right, so I think we'll take a look at his wares and then probably end it off. So he, he can buy a 45 auto pistol, basically those pistols that he's been like flipping all over the place on the table right there. Uh, 45 auto submachine gun, we've already got one of those, so there's no reason to buy another one. Uh, he's got powder charges, plasma mines, incendiary grenades, frag mines, frag grenades, fire bombs. Oh. Uh, pulse grenades, a lot of bombs. Basically, the only gun type weapon he has is the 45 auto ones. Uh, he's got a lot of, like, uh, just simple, like, healing items. He's got his enderbird on, fine, I'll take that just because it's free. Uh, he's also got a lot of mods on him. He's got, uh, the. Hydraulic slide, or HD slide, or heavy duty slide, I guess would be for the HD. A uh, silencer, a uh, compensator, drum magazines, ammo boxes for all that stuff, uh, cherry bombs, for whatever reason, uh, war club casings, uh, the honors, increases the attack speed, increases the damage. It's got ammo. I'll buy some of that. Why not? We'll buy all the mods that we can get, and I'll, I'll, I'll take a 45 pistol while we're at it. And why don't we sell the excess of weapons that we really don't need? There we go. Alright, so Joshua can also repair items for you, can ask you some personal questions, but I think we've talked enough this Not video. Easy. Next time we see Joshua, we'll definitely uh, talk to him a little bit. Let's now take a look at the 45 auto pistol. It, it's a pretty cool weapon. It's, it's basically the, the M1911, which is like the fan favorite pistol of like everybody. It's pretty cool, but now, making a return once again after, what, two, a video, video and a half, it's time for TPG to apply some brand new mods. And with that, this looks eh, a little bit better. It's got a nice little silencer, it's got a nice little, like, heavy-duty frame. Body taps anyway. They jangle like crazy. Yeah, but the jangling is fun. Uh, now we got basically a Tommy gun, so if I wore a nice suit, I could totally fit in with the New Vegas lifestyle. But, yeah. I think this is probably a good place to end it off. We made a lot of progress. We arrived at Zion. We got Ricky killed, which is a plus in my book. Uh, we met Joshua, and we learned about what's been going on out here. Next time on Fallout New Vegas, we are going to, I guess, go out and get some of those supplies that Joshua needs, which I think dictates all the way over here. So, until then, I will see you guys next time. Later. We got a long road ahead of us.